Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the recent re-release of the Nova SS Pro Stalker in 125th scale from AMT. It's kit number 1142M and it's been reissued a number of times over the years in different versions, but this one is most like the original from 1972. I would rate this as an intermediate level kit, unless you want to correct some of the kit's issues which will require some advanced skills. The kit consists of 113 parts molded in white, clear, clear red, chrome with vinyl tires and metal and plastic axles. The build is offered as either a stock, pro stock, or race version. Now you'll find there's a few things missing for the stock version, and for this build, I decided on the race version. The kit includes a stock 350 or 454 cubic inch race motor, both of which are nicely detailed. The chassis is basic but well defined, and the interior is sparsely detailed, just like the real Nova. When you're done, It'll be about seven and a half inches long, two and three quarter inches wide, and two and three quarter inches high. Here are the contents of this kit and my version of the open box review. I won't pick up each part and try to describe it. You can see for yourself in about five seconds. Now I would suggest we're using uh, liquid cement for most of the build, sometimes uh, super glue for strength, and occasionally white or clear glue for the window parts. Also, the decals that you see here are one of the best uh, parts of this kit, along with the great box art. Uh, they're very nicely done, and there's plenty of sponsor decals to go uh, and cover the entire surface if you'd like. I suggest using some uh, setting solution for some of the larger decals, however, to help it conform to the body. I started this build with the body parts. As you can see here, it comes in four pieces, including the separate fenders, which causes some issues on its own. But first thing we'll do is clean it up by removing any parting lines or any of the flash from the edges, etc. I also take a little bit off of the hood's edges uh, in case the paint thickness causes an issue there. On the fender, there's a script for the 350 engine if you're building the stock version, go ahead and leave it in place, but I'm building the race version with the 454, so I decided to scrape it off with a blade and then sand it smooth. There's some flash on the uh, inner fender well next to the door jam there on the driver's side. You'll want to remove that. And also uh, a pretty heavy flash along the C-pillar in the back. Uh, so sand those smooth. To get the fenders positioned properly, I taped the hood into place along with the fenders so they were in the correct position. With the fenders positioned properly in relation to the hood and the body, here's the trick. Turn it over and put some super glue or some epoxy glue inside where the fenders meet the fender well on the underside of the car. That will keep it in position in the right place. Unfortunately, with the fenders in place, you'll find that they're misshapen a little bit uh, due to molding defects and they don't really fit exactly as, as described, um, especially in the right side where it extends down too far on the skirt. So you're going to have to use some putty and some sanding sticks to, to smooth that out and perhaps rescribe the uh, panel line there. Also note the uh, 350 script has been removed. Once you've cleaned up the body with all of the um, ambiguities and, and repairs and, and everything uh, smoothed out, Give it a fine sanding, uh, a wet sand with some 800 sandpaper, and let it air dry. And then give it a nice thorough coat of medium primer inside and out. After the primer has dried, do the sanding again to smooth out any blemishes. And then I used uh, this Krylon uh, paint called uh, Shortcuts, uh, and the flavor is iris. Um, it's kind of a bluish purple, and I thought it went well. So. Give it a couple of mist coats uh, with 10 minute intervals and then a couple of wet coats with the same uh, 10 minute intervals until you get a nice even color. After the body has dried, we can apply the decals. The sponsor decals go on pretty nicely and I would suggest though that you use um, some setting solution for the larger decal on the door. 
I used a variety of items to accent the trim, including some of the liquid chrome pens, regular paint and a brush, and some bare metal foil. Most of the um, trim is done with the chrome pens, except in the very corners where you can't get a chrome pen uh, into those features, and that's where I use uh, some chrome paint uh, in, to finish those edges. Also, at the bottom uh, of the car is a, a chrome rocker um, trim piece uh, that was um, made with the bare metal foil. Uh, the foil is like a self-adhesive reflective tape uh, with a chrome finish. You just cut a piece off uh, uh, to fit it over the feature you want to um, trim and uh, then you t uh, press it down nice and uh, hard. Make sure that you get it into all the crevices. Then you use a sharp hobby knife to uh, trim off any excess and it makes a pretty good looking uh, trim piece. Let the decals and trim all dry and set overnight and then go over your vehicle with uh, a nice coat of uh, clear uh, to seal in the decals. Next we'll start working on the engine but you should note that for piece number 511 which is the plenum that goes underneath the carbs there uh, the instruction is wrong. Uh, as indicated by the, uh, the letters there on the center uh, arrow which points down to the valley cover. Uh, if you glue that to the valley cover you're going to get a pretty funny looking engine. Um, so follow along here and I'll show you where that goes. Note also there's some parts in yellow tint there. They get added later on after the engine is in place uh, to make sure you get good alignment and don't break anything off. One of the glaring problems with this kit and some of the earlier models is that there's a hole in the oil pan. Uh, in order to get the uh, drive uh, axle uh, to both wheels they went right through the motor for some of those early kits. For clarity you can see from the uh, side uh, box art here the, um, the plenum goes on top of the intake uh, runners there uh, not, uh, not down in between them uh, so that this is what your motor should look like for the race and pro stocker version. We can start construction of the motor with these five pieces while the oil pan uh, for the um, 454 is in a bleach bath getting dechromed. So first assemble these pieces, you know the block halves and the heads there and then add the front of the motor in place. Here's the oil pan and it clearly shows from the white arrow here the hole in it um, that's used for access of the axle. Now. I'm going to show you how to repair this and replace it with a, a regular uh, more realistic oil pan. But you don't have to do that. You can just use this one if you like. I started uh, preparing the engine for paint here uh, by using some aluminum on the transmission and uh, a coat of orange for the uh, Chevy engine. Um, and as you can see the uh, oil pan here is stripped and ready for repair. I grabbed a piece of sprue from the kit and I laid it into the area where the hole is. Then I cut off the ends and sanded it all smooth and flat and finally used a little bit of putty uh, to finish off the edges. You can see it laid in here uh, the stripes are on the sprue piece. While the oil pan was drying I added a little weathering uh, a little thinned black and uh, thinner wash of, of dark black uh, flat black paint uh, to give the, a little definition to the transmission. Now we can glue the oil pan in place and the white arrow indicates the repair and then we're going to um, paint the uh, rest of the oil pan and the engine uh, with another coat of orange. I painted the oil filter flat white and then added the uh, Lee uh, filters decal from the kit to the side. I painted the headers flat white as well and cleaned up the edge where it's bonded to the side of the cylinders. Then I hollowed out the ends uh, with a drill and a sharp hobby knife blade. Gather up the rest of the engine's pieces and we'll be um, leaving off however the, the upper radiator hose and the fan but then uh, we can go ahead and assemble the rest of the motor and as you can see from the first diagram the assembly order is um, put on there in red letters our numbers so that you know how it's uh, how it goes together. So here's what the uh, engine looks like when you're done uh, putting most of it together. Now I just attached the headers and the fan with a little bit of um, quake hold. It's uh, a putty that they use to hold things in position 
museums use it a lot. And also note that I uh, gave the uh, carbs a little gold tint to uh, make it look more realistic. I'll get these parts out for the racing version wheels. It's really nice Racemaster slicks here. Unfortunately, they didn't modify the wheels to actually fit those tires. So you're probably going to have to stuff them with some uh, tissue paper and use a little tube glue or rubber cement to uh, keep them in place against the rim sides. Anyway, also note that on the rears, uh, it has a different backing uh, plate on the inner wheel than uh, the fronts, which just have a trim ring uh, that glued to the back side of the mags there for the front tires. Now, even the front tires are pretty nice. It's got some raised lettering, so assemble those at this time. The tires are mounted onto the steel axle here just for demonstration so that you can see the tread. I notice uh, the tires on the left have not been uh, modified, but the ones on the right have been um, roughed up on the tread area. You just simply use a flat piece of uh, sandpaper about 220 and roll and press those onto the uh, sandpaper to give them a nice rough used look. Now here's another section of that optional construction that I told you about uh, when dealing with that hole in the oil pan. Now we don't have an axle, so we'll have to make uh, some stub axles to fit around where the engine goes, more like a real vehicle. So we're going to start with some evergreen tubing. It's about uh, 0.125 inches in diameter or 3 millimeters, and it has a, a, a 1 16th inch internal hole running through it. It's about we're going to cut a piece about uh, 1.7, one, uh, almost 1 and 3 quarter inches long. Now there are a number of ways to approach that hole in the oil pan. And if you elected to use that, you can skip this next section where I tell you how to use what you've got here uh, to make stub axles to go around it. But there's also the chance that you could modify uh, some other kits, front suspensions like a 69 Camaro or a 70 Chevelle to fit and replace the front end. So what I did, however, was I used uh, the upward stanchions there of the, uh, the side walls on the inner fenders and I drilled the holes out just big enough to put that little tube through that we talked about earlier. Now make sure that the tubing is centered and just protrudes through the side walls there and secure it with a piece of tape. You can see at the red arrow there. And now we're also going to take a little bit of super glue and we're going to glue it into position. Here's that view from the bottom. You can see the red arrows pointing to the protrusion of the tubing through the outsides of the inner fender walls. I've also got the metal axle in there for demonstration. Here it is from the top side, but you can't see where it protrudes through because it just barely comes through enough to provide uh, support for the axle. The arrows here indicate where some epoxy glue was used, some 5 minute epoxy, to secure the axle into position permanently. Next, we'll saw the uh, tubing off on the inside uh, so that it provides enough relief to place the engine into the cradle there. Here's a view of what that looks like with the piece removed. But don't throw that piece away. We'll use it later. Here's a mock-up of the axle stubs now with the axle running through it and the tires on each side. Next, we're going to cut the axles off right there about where the red lines are. Now, you can use the plastic axles that come in the kit if you don't have tools for it, but you can use a rotary grinder uh, or even a file and just notch the, um, the axle and then bend it off. Here's what the driver's side will look like after you've got the axle stub assembly glued in and a piece of the axle protruding through uh, on the inside of the vehicle. Here both of the stubs are uh, visible here from the red arrows you can see them and the axle uh, portions are sticking through there and there's still plenty of room for the engine to be uh, placed in the cradle. So do you remember that uh, piece of tubing that we took out of the center section? Slice off about a sixteenth of an inch uh, or about a millimeter worth off of uh, the ends and then place them on the inside of the uh, axle stubs, the metal portions, to act as keepers. Now. Use a little super glue and glue those into position, making sure that you don't get glue into the main axle area, just on the outsides, so the keepers stay in place and keep those uh, axles in position. Now we're going to work on the seats. Uh, they've already been painted, they're a semi-gloss, and we're going to assemble those seats together. 
The back of the headrest uh, had a, a sharp angle, um, almost as if it didn't belong there. You could actually see into the back of the seat. There was a, a visible line there. So I sanded those smooth, finished them off with some putty, and then painted them again with some semi-gloss black. Find the parts now for the interior, uh, and in this case, it includes the roll cage, uh, but not the back seat area, uh, for this is the racing version. There are some uh, holes in the bottom of the uh, interior pan that you'll need to clear out uh, with a hobby knife or a drill to make um, a place to uh, position the, the roll cage. There's not a lot of opportunity to detail the interior tub and it's molded in one piece so it's difficult anyway. But I put a piece of uh, foil along the top trim there and then uh, used the chrome pen for the handles on the uh, door. Now remember to scrape any paint or chrome for that matter before you put uh, glue on pieces that you want to join together so that they'll bond. Now we're going to take and add the uh, seats uh, and the roll cage to the interior now. All of the interior parts were painted with the semi-gloss black and the dashboard doesn't have a lot of detail uh, but it does have some uh, script in the uh, gauge area there for the speedometer etc. So I highlighted those with a dry brush just a little bit of paint on the brush and uh, went across the letters to bring those out. Now we can glue the floor shift uh, into place. That's uh, essentially uh, got a black knob and a chrome handle and the dashboard into position. I just use a little tape to keep it uh, from moving around while the glue set. Surprisingly, we can detail the firewall as it's separate, so I just used a little uh, highlighter and some uh, chrome pens, etc., uh, and a silver pen, and gave it a little bit of uh, detailing. In order to locate the firewall, it has a ridge at the top, and you can see it there with the stripes with the blue arrow pointing to that. And on the uh, body tub, the red arrow points to where it, it sets on top of that ledge. And you glue that on top of that ledge to install the firewall. Now the kit comes with a chromed two-dial tachometer, but I decided to use some pieces from the kit. I cut off a piece of the chrome sprue you see here at the top with the right arrow and also there's a piece of glass that's nice and round that's attached to the windows. And I put those together to make my own tachometer as you can see here in the interior. I also detailed the steering wheel with a little bit of chrome paint or aluminum paint I'm sorry on the middle of the steering wheel spokes. I added a little body color edge spray to the uh, lower chassis pan there. Uh, like it would have been in the factory. And I also gathered up the parts for the rear suspension. Uh, we'll also have to do some work here, so get ready for a little bit of, of that. The axle housing was warped, so I had to use a couple of alligator clips to clamp it down to glue it together properly. You can glue the axle housing onto the um, leaf springs there, and I used uh, this opportunity to mock everything up to see how it all fit together. Once again, I used a little of that quake hold tape to keep things in position. I was trying to go for a street look, uh, but I realized that the shackles that are in back uh, used for the suspension uh, keep the rear tires from uh, running into the uh, rear wheel openings. They also move it forward a little bit so it's more centered in the uh, wheel opening. So then I mocked up the suspension with the shackles on the rear springs and this is what I got. I felt that was a little too high. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of room there and I don't know that I ever even saw that in real life. So then I cut the shackles in half. And as you can see, they're still about uh, a centimeter long. So that gave me uh, plenty of rise, although it wasn't quite as drastic as the uh, foot-tall scale uh, shackles that come with the kit. I suspect they were made for even larger tires that came with one of the versions. The traction bars are chrome, but it has a ridge along the outside which is very visible. So I sanded that off and then refinished that with the chrome pen. Here you see the chrome racing version shock absorbers. I scraped and sanded off the uh, chrome from the upper portion and I painted those yellow for a more realistic look. 
here you can see the red arrow pointing to the uh, radius rods there, the, the, sh the uh, act traction bars, and, and the white arrow pointing to the visible uh, yellow shock absorber in the back. And the whole thing is mocked up. I also did a little detailing with a silver pen on some of the lines and the uh, straps that hold the gas tank in. Here's an idea if you want a Pro Street version. You could uh, narrow up the fuel tank there with using some uh, some sheet plastic for the sides and then also narrow up the axle and the uh, axle housing and then the white lines there uh, would indicate where you might want to open up those wheel wells just a little bit uh, but this would give you the opportunity to make a more realistic looking street version you could also uh, find that you might have to shorten up the um, springs up front and then uh, the drive shaft as well uh, in order to accomplish that with the rear suspension in place, I now had a chance to mock up the engine to see if it fit into the hood opening where the scoop is. So I went ahead and put that into position with some more of that putty. And that putty is really nice because uh, if you buy the good quality stuff like Quake Hold or the Blue Tack, you can uh, pull it right out. Uh, it sticks to itself but nothing else and it won't leave a residue. So then I went ahead and put the body on with the hood to make sure that it fit properly into the hood opening. Another shortcoming of these older kits, um, and this one in particular, is the heavy sprue uh, connections to the bumpers. Um, you have to trim those off away from the bumper a bit and then try and uh, hobby knife it uh, low enough to get a sand stick on it. And even then, you'll probably need to use a little chrome pen to uh, touch those areas up. Now we can add some detail to that front bumper. Uh, there's some inset sets on both sides of the license plate area. Uh, those will be painted flat black. And on the outside of that, the uh, side uh, turn signal lights, uh, those had um, uh, been uh, given a little bit of a dot of orange in the middle and then flooded with some uh, semi-white paint, a little thinned white paint, uh, to make sure that it looked like it was behind the glass. The uh, grill, of course, and then the, uh, the pods on each side of the headlight are given a, a black wash treatment with a 50-50 thinner of paint and thinner. Do a test fit to see where the bumper uh, fits in there and then scrape off any chrome or paint from the areas where it makes contact. Also note that we've uh, painted the uh, radiator area and the hood uh, and of course the um, portions of the interior of the uh, roof uh, flat black. Install the front bumper into place. The interior portions of the engine bay and the bottom of the hood are also given a flat black paint. Next we'll get the, uh, the window glass out and dip that into some future floor polish uh, or pledge floor polish or whatever they call it nowadays and let it wick off and dry and it'll give a nice clean look. I wanted to be able to see some of the interior so I decided that I didn't want the side windows rolled up. So I scored the plastic using a metal ruler and the back side of a hobby blade so that it would fit the window openings except for the side windows. Now you can just put uh, your thumb on each side of the uh, area that you've uh, scored there and snap that window off cleanly um, so that you can use that portion for the uh, windows. Glue all of the windows into place using some white glue or some crystal clear product. There are also some racetrack decals available for that rear quarter window. Look for the glue points where the interior tub meets the chassis and go ahead and glue the interior tub into position. I went back over and add a little uh, gloss sheen to the roll bar. I thought it looked a little better than the semi or flat black that it was earlier. So here's the rolling chassis with the interior tub mounted onto uh, the bottom chassis portion. Look for the glue points and go ahead and scrape any paint or chrome and then glue these pieces into place. Note that the uh, headers will be added after the engine is mounted into position. Use some slow setting glue so that you can move that uh, into exactly the center after you get the body on. 
Now we're going to mock up the body into position on the chassis and make sure that the engine is perfectly perpendicular to the plane of the uh, car. Uh, you can see the red line here indicates right straight through the middle and then make sure that it sets into position there. Um, even if you have to put an object like a pencil or something on each side uh, to make sure it stays in place. Now you can remove the body to work on it or even really just leave it in place. It's up to you uh, and add these other pieces. Gather these accessory pieces um, including the rear bumper and note that I made some custom license plates for my car using my logo. I just printed it out on some plain paper covered it with some cellophane tape and then I'll glue those into position later. To finish off the bumper we're going to use that um, uh, black wash around the rear panel in the center there in the middle of the tail lights. And then we're going to add the license plate and glue uh, the red tail lights into position using some white glue or crystal clear. Now you can locate some of those glue points and even just along the sides uh, where the chassis meets the body. Use a little super glue and tack that into position so that your body and chassis are mated together. Here's what the rear looks like and also we'll show you what the front looks like after you've added the headlights uh, in the front there uh, to the grill. Well this is a two-in-one kit so you're bound to have some extra pieces. Of course the back seat came out for the racing version and the stock exhaust and the tires, the hood and the stock engine are all complete units uh, that are separate and you'll have parts left over for your next kit bash. Well, there you have it. Your model is complete. In the instruction, only the removal of the hood scoop determines the race or pro stock versions. But you could also consider the pro street version by modifying that rear axle. In any case, I'd leave the hood in place just in case they start throwing roses at you when you cross the finish line first. Now unfortunately, this kit still retains some of the issues from its original 72 release. But we'll show you how to save this old pro and turn it into a modern showpiece. The decals are great with stock badging and the old pro and innovator markings. Highlights of the kit include beautiful box art, excellent decals, race master slick rear tires, and two detailed motors. And as with all mo models, most important thing is great content. And if you want an early 70s Nova, this is it. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. So we hope you like this custom premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.